Marhaba ya shabab. So, welcome to a new video. Um, in the previous video, we we finished the pipeline configuration. Our CI/CD uh, .yaml file is finished right now. And as you might remember, was just the last thing I was explaining is this part here, the deploy to droplet step. And as you can see, we have here a docker minus compose um, command. And now this means we have to also create a docker compose file on our server. So let's jump right into it. So what we are need, I mean, I, I guess you know what we are doing right now. We are just connecting to our server, ssh minus p, the port 1022, and user at um, host IP address. Okay, it's asking for my passphrase. Let me just clear, list all scripts. As you can see, we don't have a Docker Compose file right now. Uh, no problem. La tujad mushkila. Let's create one. Touch docker dot uh, docker minus compose dot yaml. Okay. The file is created. So next thing, what we're going to do is we need to make it uh, executable. So we do this with change mode plus x, x for, um, for uh, executable, but first just list again all scripts that you see something. Here's our file, as you can see, read, write permissions are set for for the owner group and for the rest. And uh, now let's change mode plus x docker minus compose.yaml list let me just for first clear the screen again and now again list all screen list all scripts. Now the file became green as you might see and we have executable rights. So next step would be to um to put some input in the file some content <laughs> okay now let's open the file with uh the vim editor docker minus compose dot yaml i for insert mode now we can define the version i will tell its version uh, single quotes uh 3.8 and the version you get from Docker. I mean, I can show it to you. Just let me just quickly save colon W Q exclamation mark. And let me just show something to you. Docker version. So the version of Docker is 20. And it, the Docker version depends which version of Docker Compose you can use. So let's go here on the browser. If you search for, I was just searching for Docker Compose versions and there you see it, it depends on the Docker engine. And we have 20 as you, as you could see here, we have the version 20. And so we can use an older version like 19 and 3.8. Okay, uh, open again the file. Okay, that looks good. Uh, again, insert mode, and now define some services. Uh, the reason why we are creating this Docker Compose file, all we type in here, we can also type it in the command line in our terminal on our server, but this would be very tedious, and that, that's why you have a Docker Compose file. You don't have to uh, explicitly write out all the time the commands. So. The first service we are defining is the API service. This is the name you can choose for your backend. I mean, you can also name it backend or my backend application, whatever you want, my task app or so. Uh, we will define the image. We have to define the image we used here in our CI CD pipeline. Mm, here's the image. As you can see in our build and push Docker image um, step, copy, paste, okay, type, okay. 
Uh, then we define a container name. So this is a step you don't have to do, but I like to, you know, when the uh, container starts up, I want to give it a real uh, name I defined instead of a, a randomly chosen one by Docker. Otherwise, Docker will just randomly chose one. Now comes a very interesting part, and this is a very interesting part, believe me. Environment we have to define here we can set environment variables and as you might remember if you watched my other video my first playlist which was released in january this one year kotlin spring boot series in my playlist you might remember um that we define some environment variables if you go to your ide here in intellij just go to edit configurations then this window pops up and here environment variables. Otherwise you find it here, modify options. And here I have uh, set the check mark here. Okay, here are my environment variables. And these environment variables are some secrets. We define them as secrets. Uh, let, let me just show it to you. And da, 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 da. here resources, application. And this application of YAML file, we push to uh, GitHub. But for instance, if, you, if it's your private project or your company's project, um, you define them as secrets here because you don't want to uh, let people know in a public GitHub repository, even if it's a private repository, you wouldn't want some secrets like this, like the database URL, um, your username and password for the database. These are secrets. So that's why it, we we create this um, placeholders here for our uh, IDE, and the IDE takes the secrets from our environment variables. And, this, and these environment variables never leave our machine, never leave the IDE. And this is also the concept. We will also define environment variables on our server. Uh, so the first secret would be this one data source driver class name so just go here you have to do the stash before uh, then you paste um, the secret name and then we do something funny let me just show it to you dollar sign curly braces and you might remember let me just close it quickly again you also use dollar sign curly braces here and the, the reason is we're telling that this is um, a secret you get some from somewhere. And our environment variable gets the secret from our .env file. We will, we, we will, we will create it in a few minutes. Um, but yeah, just to explain to you what is going on here. So because these uh, things were the data source, for instance, this will then pass on to our application. So, because we have here data source driver class name, we also have to name it like that as well. This part we could, uh, the dollar and curly braces part, which is inside, we could name it as we want, but it's easier, you know, you, you'd name it the same. We would name everything the same in a .env file. I hope you understand what I mean. So, again, let's look up edit configurations to get all the secrets. So data source. Uh, da, 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 da. So basically what we are doing right now is just uh, taking all the things we got here, um, all the environment, environment names, environment variable names, and paste it in here. I will just do this quickly. You do it as well, and then we continue with the video. Type. Okay. Uh, I hope you co copied all the variable names, var variable environment names out from your IDE. So here in the Docker Compose file, and if you if you just following along and, and fork my repository in GitHub, you can uh, just um, copy the Docker Compose file, which I will provide in the description down below. You can or you just grab it from the medium.com article and you're fine. If you're using other variable names, like I am here, just make sure you copy the proper ones. 
Okay, now next thing is we come to ports. We define the port for the application. And this will happen like this. Uh, okay, da, 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 da. dollar sign. And again, we need curly braces. Uh, make sure you have uh, double quotes. Just take the server port here. paste and then colon and then basically what you can do is I mean I just could paste it as well so this provides the uh, the port which the application should be running okay looks good and now we say just restart because we uh, because we want that the application always restarts when it gets terminated so and this is the final file how it should look like first the version 3.8 then the services later we can add some other services like web front end and so on but now we of course we're just adding the the backend api and the container name the environment variables and so on and so forth uh yeah and the 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 the, the how, how is it called the um, i mean which one you add first here from the environment variables it doesn't matter uh the chronology was was it chronology in english doesn't matter i just uh, because i just copied uh now and I, I, I didn't want to type it out i just copied out from medium.com and from my article so if you watch my video carefully you might see that the, the first i had in the for in the first row another variable name i think it was data source username or so but it doesn't matter that the, the chronological order it doesn't matter or the alphabetical order doesn't matter here uh yeah and here this this variable name server port um, is used for both container and the host, which means the application will be accessible on the same port on the host machine as it is within the container. So basically the application will be running, the Docker container will be running on, in the Docker container it will be running on 1990 and on the host machine it will also run 1990. Because normally, I think it was on the right side, the right side is the Docker, um, I think it was on the right side, the, the uh, Docker port and on the left, the host port. But it could be, I always mixing this up, it could be also vice versa. Yeah, and the restart, this option configures the restart policy for the API service. In this case, it's set to always, which means the Docker daemon will always try to restart the container if, if it stops, regardless of the exit status. Okay. That's it for the Docker Compose file. So just escape colon W Q exclamation mark. Uh, yes, I just come in here to the IDE because I want to say to you, this part is almost done right now. But of course we have to add the dot in V file, just create um, with Vim or any other editor, a .env file for, it stands for environment variables. And our oh, Docker Compose, Docker is, it's, uh, it's already pre-configured. It always looks first in this .env file. If we have uh, one in this, on the same file structure, like, like our Docker Compose. Like, let me just clear the screen, list all scripts. As you can see, we have here the docker minus compose file. Here we will create the .env file. And it will be in the, on the same hierarchy, folder hierarchy like our docker minus compose.yaml. So let's create it. Okay. So, and the same game goes on here. We just have to add all the environment variables here, uh, which happens like this. Go again to the environment variables. Go like this. 
copy and I said the, the, the order which you add first doesn't matter. First the uh, name, the, the, the important part, first the envi environment variable name and then the environment variable value. So data source double class name, just say this here. Okay. And at the rest. Okay. So, okay. Okay, that's it. As you can see, we have uh, added all the environment environment variable names. Akash, I cannot pronounce it properly. Environment variable names and all the environment variable values. Okay, just say escape colon w q exclamation mark and list all scripts again. As you can see, we have now this .env file and AutoCon Compose will by default look into this .env file for our environment variables inside our docker minus compose.yaml file. Um, okay, I would say this video is getting pretty long. I will stop right now, right now the recording and I would say we see each other in the next video.